Uh, our next speaker is, uh, her name is Monica. She is a mom. She spends her free time volunteering uh, with her daughter's sports teams and has volunteered to speak today on the controversial issues impacting the public schools. Monica, welcome. Good morning. My name is Monica Cameron, and I'd like to talk to you about my concerns about transgender students being allowed to play in FCPS sports teams with the opposite sex. Three years ago, President Obama declared that transgender students be recognized and treated as the gender they felt like to include access to school bathrooms, locker rooms, and playing the public school sports teams. In two weeks, and without considering the impact to the diverse needs of other students, the FCPS school board rushed to modify policy 1450 to comply with the political edict. There was no community input allowed or studies performed on how these regulations would impact the other 99.9% .9 of the students. And this is the same school board that took almost 10 years debating and studying the impact of whether to, to change our school start times. So again, no input, no thought whatsoever, just impulse to be politically correct. Um, this type of unethical and sneaky behavior only deepened the distrust of parents toward this politically driven school board. A year later on Friday before the 4th of July weekend, when no one's in town and no one pays attention, the school system released the regulations on how transgenderism would be implemented in the public school system. In short, the new school regulations basically allow the rights of a small minority of transgender students to supersede the rights of anyone else. And it went a step further to include imposing harsh penalties on the students and parents that did not cooperate. Furthermore, the regulations directly violated the First Amendment rights of free speech, association, religion, and press of others, along with parental rights and the Dillon Rule, if you follow uh, Virginia law. Thankfully, and because of mass protest by people here today, the school board temporarily suspended the regulations, but not the policy 1450. They then said each transgender student would be handled by each school on a case-by-case -case basis. This is left up to the individual's principals to decide. And again, parents are given no information about what their children are being subjected to in the public school system. As of today, there are outside groups that are applying pressure to the school board to reinstate the suspended and suspended transgender regulations. As a mom of three students, athletes in the public school system, my concerns are real and I'm not alone. If the transgender regulations were reinstated, it would allow the opportunity for biological males who are physically bigger and stronger to play alongside female athletes. Not only is this inherently unfair to female athletes, it directly violates Title IX law that was passed to ensure equality among the two sexes. Furthermore, and the most concerning, it, is, it puts our student athletes at a great deal of risk for injury. My daughter is a petite five foot two field hockey player. She has had two concussions and multiple other injuries while she was just playing with other female athletes. I can't imagine, nor do I even want to, the types of injuries that might occur if a bigger and stronger biological male was allowed to play alongside she and her fellow teammates. It would not only be dangerous to the girls, it would be an incredible risk and liability to the schools. And in closing, as a mother, I can't imagine how hard it is to have a child that is confused about his or her God-given biological sex. And I can't imagine how it impacts the family on a day-to-day -day basis. I am sympathetic to parents, to those parents, but their issue should not take priority of the safety, health, and well-being of the entire student body which they are surrounded. We need to respect the needs and well-being of all the students, just the same, and not just some. Thank you. <laughs>